Cool. I uh, you look a little fuzzy. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's on your end. Maybe it's on my end. It's like I think this. I think this camera sucks. Honestly, I actually just had Becker tell me what to buy for better high quality video stuff. So should be better shortly. Okay, so you ordered that on Amazon or something? Yeah, he made me buy him a thousand dollar camera. <laughs> Dude, I bought $3,000 worth of video equipment that, like, he told me to get and I just haven't used yet. And I'm like... Oh, oh it sounds like me. Dollars. Yeah. It sounds like me. <laughs> but it's coming around. We're doing some YouTube content probably next quarter. It's just I'm not a focus right to, now. I'm going to force him to come to my house and do it. He's like, it's going to be an hour setup. I'm like, yeah, you're going to fly. You're going to fly or drive here and I'm going to pay you to do it because I'm not doing it. <laughs> An hour for me is going to be six hours. So let's just get you to do it and it'll be yeah, good. Then. You can get shit done quick. Dude, yes. uh, I thought you bought the webcam, bro. <laughs> Somebody knows that you're buying webcams. Wow, Guys, someone took uh, shit. Uh, I think that's uh, Cam. So Cam, so I was on a call with Cam and I was asking him about his quality and he's like, buy this other Logitech. And then Cam, I told Icon that and he's like, Cam's stupid. He didn't say Cam is stupid. I just added that part. He said, don't listen to Cam. So in terms of the webcam stuff, you know, I love you, Cam. Um, he was saying in terms of uh, like car, SD card, I don't know. It's over my head. I don't you know. You do not look fuzzy on this end. So we're good. And guys, everybody that's watching, we're going to jam pack this with systems, operations, team, prospecting, all that good stuff. Uh, we have Alex Shalinski here with us uh, from Prospecting On Demand. Uh, he runs two six-figure businesses. Uh, one is a coaching consulting business. Another one is an agency, which is pretty much all outsourced. Um, and I don't know why I said pretty much because it is basically, I keep saying basically, it's outsourced, right? Um, so uh, we're going to be talking about the systems, operations, teams, those sorts of things that you can put in place that you're not working as hard. Like you've got to, as business owners, we focus on different areas. Um, and I feel a big issue in this space, especially diving into so many courses and so many coaching programs, they focus on like, here's how you run Facebook ads. Here's how you run a webinar. Like all of these things that basically make you a an employee in your own company. Um, they're not talking about systems, operations, team, like, those uh, vision values, um, creating culture within your business, those sorts of things that actually make you a CEO and business owner. Um, instead, uh, it's a good way to get cash flow up front. But ultimately, if you want to scale, you want to dive into the systems operations team and have that roadmap ahead of you so you know what is coming. Um, so that's what uh, we'll dive in today. Um, Alex, why don't you introduce yourself real quick? Uh, any Anything you want to add? I think you just nailed it. I don't really think there's anything else to add there. Um, cool. My name's Alex Linsky. Good to see all of you. I think most of you probably know me at this point, which is super cool. I appreciate that. Um, I'm the hot wings guy recently because I did a video where Brian and I ate hot wings because we couldn't book sales calls for you, which was the dumbest idea I've ever had. Also the funniest idea I've ever had. Um, probably will do that again soon. But uh, yeah, I coach entrepreneurs, coaches, consultants, systemization, have my own agency and I run a coaching program. And yes, not basically completely outsourced, um, including Shira also, Shira, my wife, who's my business partner. She was working in the agency a little bit every month as well, but we've completely removed that, um, fully systemized it. Uh, something that I'm super grateful for. Uh, it took a long time, a lot of energy, billion mistakes, um, but I'm happy to share with you guys that experience to make it easier and better for you. I love it, love it. Um, and I love that you did the hot wings challenge. I was talking with Avery recently about people that have just created multi-million dollar businesses without doing anything in ads. And it's really because they've created those vi the viral pieces of content that has brought a lot of people to the top end of their funnel. And yeah. it's from doing things like that, as, as silly as it might be, it gets a lot of eyeballs on your stuff and a lot of people talking about you. And that's something we are going to dive into as a business um, pretty shortly here. But so smart that you're diving into it early and just creating that viral content because that gets eyeballs on your stuff. 
Yeah, being unique is like such a key element. People ask me about saturation all the time. And they're like, you know, how do I how do I dominate my competition? Like, how do I handle all this? Like Andrew and I were just at an event, Rob Quinn's mastermind, and we're all sitting there, similar programs, similar offers, right? And I made a post and I wrote collaborators, not competition. And the truth is like, we're all good friends. We all care about the people we work with. We all ultimately want the best for the people we work with. But a lot of people end up thinking in the opposite vein, like, how do I beat my competition? How do I crush them? How do I be better than them? And I think the reality is, is you don't have to be better than anyone else. All you have to do is just be uniquely you. You and your own value and your own, uh, you know, game that you bring to the table is worthwhile enough. Um, you don't have to be someone you're not. Like, if Hot Wings is not you, don't do it. That is so me. That, that's who I am. Like, I want to be like suffering eating hot wings in front of your face because I'm silly as hell. And and I know you'll laugh and watch it and also learn something from it versus like me just calling people um, because I can do that in my programs and, and, and make different you know value. But there's so many different types of unique ways to stand out. And that's the only way to stand out in the landscape that we live in now, which is so saturated with content, not content to your audience, content period content i i don't know the number but i saw recently like how many videos are being uploaded to youtube a minute or something i think it's like fifty thousand minutes every minute is being uploaded there's not enough people in the world to watch all the content so you have to be uniquely you um and special and i think that's something that's really really fun yeah yeah and getting in now because like in about I don't know how many years, but it's going to be saturated. It's going to be harder to grow on any platform online. Like I'm so grateful that I got into Facebook groups two years ago because, Oh, there you go. Um, because it was easier. It was easier to grow a Facebook group back then. It was easier to grow a YouTube channel back then. It was easier to grow an Instagram profile back then. Um, and things are just getting harder and harder and harder on the online space. So the yeah. best time to jump in and grow a platform, grow an audience is now. Um, yes. <laughs> you, you keep going in and out. I don't know if I, you tried to play peekaboo or how to go or how to go I, see. Uh, I said yesterday was the best time uh, to jump in, but but I think the point that you're making is a lot of people will get concerned, like, oh, like did I miss the boat, guys? It's still 100% the gold rush right now. Like we're yeah. still in the 49 gold rush right now. Like. Facebook is not regulated. Uh, you can say anything you want online and not be held accountable for it. You can create audiences on YouTube for millions of people in one instant. You can create a viral video and have literally hundreds of millions of people see it in 24 hours. Like these are proven things consistently over and over. You don't have to follow anyone's track or trajectory. You just need to start now. Honestly, yesterday, can't go back. So what's the best time if not yesterday? Right now, right yep. now. And one thing I want to add on top of that is focus on one platform first. I see so many people trying to spread themselves out saying, oh, I want to grow a YouTube channel, Facebook group, and Instagram profile, blah, 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 all this stuff at once. Uh, the man who chases two rabbits catches none. Uh, so focus on one platform and grow that. And with that, you'll also grow your email list. And what I did, which was fucking awesome, was I grew my Facebook group. And in tandem, I grew my messenger bot. And then when I shot out a messenger bot broadcast that's saying, hey, I have this new YouTube video up, I got like 200 subscribers in one day because the, the amount of people that read your messenger bot is way more than email. Um, so that's a little ninja hack for you. Get people on your messenger bot and then you can broadcast out about new awesome free content that you've created on another platform and you'll get subscribers there. So I have a great ninja hack for you similar to that. Love it. And you're going to love this, right? So you see a lot of people on the in this landscape do the, do you want this post, right? Do you want this thing? Comment below. Super valuable post, creates a lot of engagement, breaks the algorithm. So what I've been doing is I've been using those singular posts as lead magnets. Here's what I do. I post something on there. I'm literally going to do this this week, guys. So prepare yourself to see it. Post something on there of something of value that I know you want. You comment yes, you send some GIF, you do some fun stuff, right? And then I'll comment and say, hey, I'll give you this. We're gonna do a live on my group and that's where I'll give it to you, come join, right? And we had like 110 people join my group when I posted, do you want my LinkedIn cheat sheet, right? I didn't even write what the cheat sheet was. I didn't say anything about it. I just said, do you want my LinkedIn cheat sheet? Had like 300 comments. A lot of people already were on in the group already. A lot of people weren't. We went from, I think, 1,400 people in the group to 1,550 in an instant. And as soon as you start getting more people, Andrew will say this for sure, 
when people engage in your group, Facebook then starts putting your group on the side of like groups you should be in. So we went from 1550 to then 20 people wanted the next day, then 25 people, and then 20 again, and then 20, and then 20, and then 20. And now suddenly we're, I think at 17 something right now, which is badass. I'm super hyped about that. Um, it's a really solid method. It also works to follow up with. I go back to that message and say, hey, did you use it? Hey, did you use it? Because they get another notification. Coming to that same post, I'm using a singular post as a lead magnet and it's killing me. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. Once you get an influx of people in your group and they start engaging, Facebook will feed you more members. It's just the same thing with entrepreneurship. It's like a momentum thing, right? Yeah. Get the momentum going and you will create so much more. Um, <laughs> funny little comment. How can I grow my grow and monetize my MySpace page? Oof. I love that. I, uh, it, You're behind on that one. <laughs> my space, though, I've been studying a lot of companies um, recently, like why companies went under, why companies have blown up, like Amazon and all that. And MySpace is super interesting because they were relying on their first mover like status. They were one of the first big, there was Friendster, and then MySpace came into the space and they shot off and they were like, oh, we're good. We're the first mover like on this and we're, we're good. And then they started putting ads everywhere on their site and they totally forgot about the end user then customer. And they had so many other problems like not building on top of the right platform and it didn't make it flexible. Um, and then after that, Facebook just shot off because Facebook cared about the customer starting out and continues to an extent to care about user experience because Facebook is really addicting. Um, and it enhances user experience. With MySpace, they put ads like everywhere and it got really annoying for the user and it got buggy as fuck. I so that's it. why MySpace went under. They just. So I wanna, I wanna add on to this for one second because I find this to be amazing. In general, in your business, right? Customer experience is so important. I think a lot of people are concerned to ask for customer feedback because they think it positions you in some way that you're not an expert if you don't know everything your client wants. It's the exact opposite. If someone I'm working with asks me about how I feel about their experience, I know they care about how I'm going through that experience. When you're inside of it, meaning you're the person running the company and the business, it's so hard to be in the shoes of your audience. It's really, really difficult because you've done it hundreds of times is over. If you just ask, you'll create so much value. And I think Facebook does that pretty well with their surveys and their models. But here's one really important key piece to remember with anything that is free, which is what Facebook is. Facebook is a free platform, right? You don't have to pay anything to create value on it. That's what like Andrew's amazing little like note is and why all of you should be at Tribe of Buyers. Andrew's literally built a million dollar company for free. Think about that for a second on Facebook for free. So here's what that means, right? There's actually no such thing as free. What does that mean? If something is free, you're the commodity. Everyone that's watching this live, you guys are commodities, right? We love you, we care about you, we think you're awesome, but you're the commodity. Andrew and I are the commodity. Facebook makes money from us being on this platform, right? They want us to maintain and stay on this platform, but don't mistake that it's free, it's not free, it's a commodity. That's why they're sharing your personal information and why people are tracking you down on Amazon when you posted something about Facebook X, Y, and Z, and now here's an ad for that you know bet that you were just searching on Facebook for. That's the model, right? People like lose their mind, like, oh my God, they're following me. It, it's no, you've agreed to this, right? And that's where this regulation comes in and why it's still you know, the, the early onset. It's funny to mention MySpace though, as we're talking about, you know, where you are right now in terms of opportunity. I, I think MySpace is dead, um, but I, I think it's still a thing, by the way. I think it's a music thing now, um, but Facebook is still very much alive. Utilize it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love it. Uh, Alex, I'd love to jump into prospecting. Cool. Uh, you, uh, you're gonna be at Tribe Buyers Live. For all of you that don't know, uh, Alex is going to be one of the speakers in, during one of the VIP lunches. He's doing a super special training on prospecting. What's it? What's it called? The five five stages for successful prospecting and retention. I think a lot of people struggle thinking that everything is just new clients, always new clients. But yeah. it's a vicious cycle. A lot of people struggle with bring on a new client lose the client. What do you do? Bring on a new client. What do you do then? You lose the client. What do you do then? Bring on a new client. Just keep going back and forth in this. So you look back at your year, you might have five or $10,000 months, but your lifetime value of every customer is like a churn on 36 or 90 days. 
how do you use effective prospecting and sales that allows you to actually retain your clients long term? And the great irony of this is, is that is exactly what Andrew and I were just talking about of the customer experience. If you're not giving a shit about your customer's experience, I guarantee you they will turn within 90 days. And I'm going to teach you how to avoid that model by putting in effective prospecting with appropriate uh, set uh, setting of expectations and long term systemization for your fulfillment. So they are satisfied with what you do, including getting on a call with them and asking them about their experience. Don't be afraid of that. It's super, super valuable. Dude, one thing that stuck out to me there was long term systemization of your fulfillment, which I feel like is missed it, 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 for uh, a lot of companies that are making less than quarter million dollars a year, their, their systemization around delivery um, and fulfilling for the client is lackluster. Like there are three sections, there's onboarding, there's delivery, and then there's upsell offboarding, right? Mm -hmm. So like a lot of people don't have their systems around onboarding uh, or like it's just like real quick and it doesn't go over expectations. It doesn't go over customer survey, all of that. Um, and then the delivery aspect of like, who are you delegating these things out to? So I'd like for you to talk about that real quick. So if somebody is just like, I do this for clients and I don't really have a systematized process around it. Where do you start? Yeah, I love that. So I always start with my five questions to clarity. I think this is the most valuable thing that any person that is lacking clarity right now can do. And this is so much greater than just the idea of the retention model or the system or anything of that nature. Just in general, having a formatted process for knowing how to create clarity is super valuable. So here's the five questions. What took my energy this week? What non-CEO activities did I do? What can be delegated? What systems do I need in order to delegate and what can I stop doing? Those five things can be answered in general or they can be directly answered to the retention model. So if I say, what took my energy for retention this week? I got on six 30 day catch up calls. Um, what non retention thing activities did I do this week? Uh, well, I jumped on those six calls instead of sending them loom reporting videos. What can be delegated? The six calls. What systems do I need? An agenda for the call. What can I stop doing? The six calls, right? It's a very formulaic process to getting where you need to get um, and having clarity. I think most people have no clarity on how to fix their system. They kind of start with what you just said, Andrew, like, hey, fix my stuff. How, what do you want me to do? Like, just magic wand? Like, I wish, that would be awesome. I would be super happy. I'd charge you a lot more money than what I would charge you now. But the reality is like, you have to understand what the clarity is. So here's usually what I do. I love the way that you broke it down. Um, for, for me, I fulfill, uh, I have two very specific formats. For onboarding, I kind of consider that like the end of sales, but it's the same, it's, it's you know just semantics. In terms of the two major fulfillment processes, it's actually delivering the service and how you deliver the service and getting the results. That's obviously key. And then secondarily is how you communicate that service in terms of their satisfaction level, upsell opportunities, testimonials, feedback, referrals, communication in general, et cetera. The first thing that I recommend doing is having a kickoff call. Don't do all the expectation setting on sales because really what you want them to be in sales is a, is a yes or no mindset. If you know for a fact you're gonna help them, you want them to simply be in a yes or no mindset. If they're in a yes or no mindset, then you can get what the ideal outcome of that call is, which is paid or not paid, right? Then you schedule a kickoff. On that kickoff is really the last time for them to get a refund if they're not on the same page with you. And this is very important. You have to make sure they're on the same page. So you express very simply what your model is and what you sold them. Are we on the same page? Confirmed. Beautiful. Ask them their expectations, right? I love this. I think it's super important and valuable. What you wanna understand is how they want to have communication from you. That doesn't mean you have to do it the way they want to, but they might want it in a certain way that you can oblige that also fits into your system. Now, what I've seen mostly as a high level model is most specifically in the agency space, not coaching, but specifically in the agency space, most companies have no interest in jumping on a monthly call with you for 30 to 60 minutes to tell them how the month went. They're not interested in that. First and foremost, a month is too long. They feel at that point more than likely you're not doing anything for them. They don't see the results and they're going to fire you by the time you get on that call. Secondly, they don't have the time for it. Thirdly, they don't have any idea what you're talking about on the call, right? They just don't. 
the way that I recommend it and how I teach people is doing a quick Loom video agenda. But you have to ask if they're okay with this model. Loom is really powerful. It's a tool, it's called useloom.com. Basically just a tool to do um, like screen sharing videos and you can have your face in the bottom. It's really great. You can comment on it directly. Very, very cool tool. Other people I know use Dub, D-U-B-B. -B. Um, but what are you doing if you're using Dub? Use Loom, it's way better. Anyways, um, Loom is also free, so it's a no brainer. So basically we've created a simple agenda for your Loom reporting. And what you do in the kickoff is you ask them, are you okay with me sending you a weekly reporting video? under five minutes, okay? Under five minutes, it's gonna break down exactly what we did for you this week, any optimizations we need, next steps, and if there's anything we need from you, we'll make it clear. And they say, awesome, that sounds great. 99% of people will. So every single Friday, you send them a simple Loom video. Now it's not you that does it, right? Someone on your team that you delegate to because all they have to do is compile a small little format. We have an SOP document, and in that document, essentially, it just breaks down the key things. So we have the three big highlights. What are the three major highlights from this past week? We had this amount of leads come in. We dropped our cost to this. We had this amount of sales, right? Simple three big highlights. Number one, uh, the next thing, excuse me, number two, is what's the major optimization you implemented from the week prior? If there's nothing, say nothing. If there was, identify it and recognize what the goal was. The key for that is that you're showing you're making progress. No one wants to work with someone that's staying stagnant. No one, right? Showcasing that progress is absolutely key. Three is just baseline numbers. Like, hey, this is what we have up to this month at this point. These are numbers, CPL, CPA, whatever you can provide them that they want to hear. Obviously, it differs per audience and per niche, but that's the key piece. Next and final bit, very easy, next steps and optimizations. There is an optional uh, fifth piece, I believe that would be. The optional one would be if they have to do anything. I try to avoid my clients having to do anything. Um, and if they have to do something, probably gonna share that in a separate email outside of this Loom video. But that's a really, really effective communication strategy that we've been implementing for like 10 years at this point. It's not true, it's more like eight years, but it's close enough. Um, it's been a long time that we've been implementing this. Our attorneys don't have time to get on calls with us. They don't wanna speak to us. They're not interested in it. They just wanna know that every single week, if they want, they're gonna have a quick little video, not from me, not from Shira, someone on our team, her name is Margo, says, hey, it's Margo here from you know Sky Social Media and blah, and blah, and blah, and blah. That's it, right? Super easy and simple. Now, we also offer a quarterly review call. The quarterly review call is critical. I think it's very important that you actually have face-to-face -face communication, whether it's Zoom, BeLive, Facebook, um, video call, whatever it might be, face-to-face -face communication with your clients at least once a quarter. So every three or four months. If you don't do this, churn is gonna happen no matter what, even if you're providing them with the, uh, with the weekly reporting. On that call, this is the most valuable thing I can tell you. It's called the red, green, yellow audit. If you do this once a quarter with your clients, I promise you, you will double the lifetime value of your clients right now. That's my essential promise to you. I promise you, if you implement this single method, you will double the lifetime value of your clients just from doing this. You get on the call and you basically frame for them that you wanna ensure they are having an exemplary experience with your company. That's it, simple as that. The goal of the call is fourfold. Feedback, testimonial, referral, upsell. It's not for all four, these are the four options coming away from that call, okay? Simple as that, feedback, referral, testimonial, upsell. Here's how you do it. Red, green, yellow audit is actually a formatted process for where the audience is at, where the client is at right now in their feelings. So red means it's too late, they're gonna leave, you're gone, you're done, right? Yellow means right now they are considering leaving you, they're not 100% happy, but you could potentially save it. That's the biggest goal of this call. Green, they're in good standing, they're gonna give you a referral, they're gonna give you a testimonial, they're gonna stick with you for a lot longer. On the call, you simply ask them very easily, what do you love most about working with us? Hand it down. Now, the best way to do this before you ask that, obviously, is to share the major highlights from the last quarter. Always share highlights so that it vibes them up to a point of that dopamine rush for them to be like, yeah, this is so great, I love working with you. Awesome, so what do you love, work, uh, what do you love most about working with us? Well, besides for those awesome wins you just shared, I love this and I love this and I love this. Beautiful, do you mind if I use that as a testimonial on one of my sales pages, or do you mind if I take that and post it on my website? Thanks, I really appreciate that, awesome. Next question, I believe in constructive criticism and feedback, we're always looking to improve our system. We're so happy that you love working with us, beautiful. 
if there was one thing we can improve for you, what would that be? And you have to say this right after. I want you to give yourself 30 seconds before you answer this question. And the reason why is because 99% of people right away when you ask this question, no, Andrew, I love you. You're great. You're awesome, right? People don't want to provide constructive criticism. Most people at the very least, right? They feel like everyone is like majorly soft and can't handle any feedback whatsoever, which is just not the case. The reality is, right? Just give them 30 seconds to marinate on it. You're still going to sometimes get someone to be like, yeah, you're great. Nothing. Okay. Is what it is. All good. They're happy with your experience. You might have someone say something that you have not even considered that is such a small tweak that will change the entire landscape of how you fulfill and it's insanely valuable. You'll also get those asinine opinions. You know, Andrew, it would be so cool if we can chat every single day for 45 minutes. No, right? It doesn't mean you have to do what they say, right? And you're allowed to say, mm, I won't be able to do that, but I really appreciate that insight. You wanna share with me why? Maybe there's something else you can uncover. From there. If they share something that's really valuable for you, write it down and implement it. I can't tell you how many times I've implemented things both in my coaching program and in my marketing agency just by asking that question. So much value. In fact, I created my elite program, Prospect on Demand Elite, from a client in my original POD program saying they needed higher level mentorship. I was like, hmm, I haven't even thought about that. Let's work that out. Let's figure this out. I literally created it from a person telling me that on one of these calls. Literally, right? The final thing that you do on the call is now you've identified whether they're, not, they're in red, green, or yellow. If they're red, it's too late. Green, you're good. Yellow, hopefully you move them back to green. You end the call with this. Is there any way that I can provide for you a better service than what you have right now? No, they're gonna say no 99% of the times because they just shared with you they loved it and how, they can, how you can provide a better service. You say this, awesome. I'm gonna ask you one of two things. Can you shoot me a quick video testimonial right now while we're on this call about how the experience has been working with me? I'm gonna use this in marketing. If you don't feel comfortable in doing that, that's totally fine. Here's what I'm gonna ask from you. Do you know any X, X is your niche, just like you in other areas that I can potentially work with that would be a good fit? If you do, and then you offer them some sort of discount. Now, I have a very specific referral model that I'll break out very briefly. If it's white collar, so like lawyers, attorneys, et cetera, doctors, I said lawyers and attorneys is the same thing. Doctors and attorneys, white collar businesses, don't offer them a discount. They don't need a discount. They don't want a discount. They want a show of goodwill or a gesture of goodwill, right? Buy them a ticket to their favorite baseball game, uh, team, um, send them out to a nice dinner with their wife, do something like that. It takes a little bit more effort and time, but that gesture of goodwill is unbelievably valuable long-term. When I really started my company, Andrew, it was not my idea at all. My next door neighbor, who was my first client, was an attorney. I told him about this, like, oh, I'll give you a discount, 500 bucks. They're like, I don't need a discount, he said. I don't need a discount. I'll pay you the money. Don't worry about it. But next time you do this, for someone else, show them a gesture of goodwill. First person I ever did this with, I sent him a $100 gift card to Ruth Chris's Steakhouse, which wasn't enough money, by the way. I didn't realize that at the time. But I sent him a $100 gift card. And I just sent it by a, um, by a mail. I had Shira write the handwriting because I can't write for shit. And um, the guy went out and sent us this amazing voicemail. Like, you know, no one that I've ever worked with in this space has done anything like this. It was so amazing. So kind of you, blah, blah, blah. It goes so much further than a $500 discount. For blue collar, 100% offered the discount. For plumbers and the tax accountant, like all those kind of like blue collar companies, 100% discount is what they want. That is my red, green, yellow audit call. That is how I do um, my formatting for long-term retention. Um, those are some of the ideas that I would recommend strongly you implement. And I'll talk a lot more about this at uh, Travel Buyers. So if you're not there, what the hell are you doing? Buy your ticket. Also buy your VIP ticket. <laughs> Snaps. Boom. Guys, if you love that, give it a heart, give it a like. And also Alex is uh, one of the speakers at Tribe of Buyers Live. Uh, October 18th through the 20th in San Diego with 200 entrepreneurs there where we're going over all of this stuff uh, with how to create your own, your very own tribe of, bu tribe of buyers uh, for your company, um, going over how we were able to make over a million dollars in the past 18 months through our Facebook group. So be there. Uh, we have a special deal going on too. Uh, it's only $297. Uh, so you get, a, uh, you get uh, $700 off of the ticket for Labor Day, plus you get the group growth and monetization blueprint for free. Um, so if you guys have been thinking about that, uh, we have that amazing deal for you. So instead of paying $2,000, you only pay $300 for both those things. 
uh, hashtag TOB down below if you want me to reach out uh, to you with more deals Let and me uh, with the coupon code. Go ahead. Let me add on to that. So um, Andrew and I have been clients of each other. We're also very good friends. Um, and I think this is directly relevant to what Andrew's saying. Andrew, I'm going to say the word forced. <laughs> <laughs> forced me to invest in his programs, including GGMB, which is if you're getting that with your ticket to TOB, that's worth it alone. But um, I had a group of about 2,500 people earlier this year, and I hired Andrew because he's a master of these Facebook groups. And I'm like, hey, help me you know, get in front of my audience better. And he gets on a call with me and he's kind of a little timid more than usual. And I'm like, Andrew's not a timid guy. What's going on here? It's like, Alex, I'm going to say something that you're going to not be happy about on this call. I'm like, oh God, what? What did I do? What did I screw up? What did I mess up? He's like, you have to stop using your shitty group that it is right now, and you got to start a brand new. I'm like, no, no, I acted like a little five year old. No, Andrew, I won't do that. That is no, I, I won't accept it, right? And he's like, look, you have two choices. You either do it and get the result you're looking for, or don't and realize Facebook is against you and it's not going to work. So I listened to him, and he's 100% correct. And that's why I'm going to be at Tribe of Buyers speaking and talking about this because he's allowed me to create more impact from my group, right? Doesn't mean that we're not growing anymore or trying more things, we 100% are. You can be wherever you are at right now in your process, whether it's beginner or you feel that you're an expert, TOB will be really valuable for you. Whether it's from me or Andrew or Grant or Jeff or Brad or the amazing people and community that are gonna be there, I'd love to shake your hand personally. If you meet me at Tribe Buyers, just give me a hug. It's all good, don't worry about it. But I just wanted to add that as well. <laughs> Thanks so much, man. And guys, get your ticket now. Uh, uh, we're only six and a half weeks out um, where you got to plan travel and you got to plan lodging. Um, so right now is the perfect time to get your ticket. Um, and thank you for all the kind words. Um, I appreciate it. Um, but let's dive into a little bit more systems operations team. Let's start with team. Who's your first hire? My wife. Um, so I'll explain <laughs> how this kind of happened. Um, so when I started, my, How did you find that? <laughs> um, she was in my bed every night and I was just like, babe, we gotta work together. Um, so, so I'll explain the wife one real quick and then I'll talk about my first other hire. So when I was working in the agency, I also worked at that time with the Miami Dolphins and the UFC, uh, real quick backstory at that time, I didn't even know digital marketing or social media marketing was a thing. This is like 2010, 11. Um, Facebook pages, I think, had just launched like about a year ago. I don't even think Facebook ads were a thing yet. I think it was still about a year away. I think that was 2011, maybe 2012. I have to look back. Um, but essentially, it was like brand new in this landscape. I obviously knew a marketing agency was, but I never really understood it. The irony of this, Andrew, the funny thing was, as I told you, I'm a huge sports fan. I was always intrigued by like sponsored by who pays who. Right, like, does planters pay the MTV Music Awards to be sponsored, or is MTV paying for plant? I was always interested by that, and sports as well. Like, who's paying for the logo? Is are they paying them? Is it, I was always interested in that, and I never expected it to become a business. But um, essentially, when I started working in my agency, it was just working for a couple clients and doing Facebook posts for them. I didn't even think I had an agency. I thought it was a side hustle job, and then I saw an ad from Dave Rogan Moser. Um, shout out to Dave, great guy. And he was talking about digital marketing agencies. And I'd never heard of that. I'd never heard of Ty Lopez. As soon as I started searching it though, I sure as hell heard of Ty Lopez and then a lot of Sam Ovens. Um, I bought Dave Rogan-Moser's course and I was fascinated by it. And I knew right away that I would not be able to do this by myself. Um, and I already knew I had a really good baseline because I'm good at sales already, good at speaking to people. I already knew how to generate opportunities. I literally had five clients before I even knew what an agency was, before I even knew that. Had my wife quit her job. Um, I stopped writing for the Miami Dolphins in the UFC and we went full force into this because we really believed it. Um, scariest thing I've ever done by far. And we had no idea how to delegate roles. Um, it was just shouting match after shouting match after shouting match, which became uncomfortable and unacceptable. Um, Andrew likes to talk about like your, um, like your core values, uh, and things that non-negotiables is what you call it. Right. And one of my non-negotiables, um, before I knew what Andrew had called it was like, my relationship with Shira matters more than the business. And I think we would say that, but then we wouldn't act upon that. So because of that, we forced ourselves to learn how to role play better um, in terms of who owns what and how to do it. And Shira just started owning all the productivities uh, and all the systems and development because I frankly can't do that in terms of like keeping track and stuff. That was something I needed her to do. And then she forced me to implement on it. And that's how the beginning of the systemization began with our company. 
Um, it was a lot of trial and error, but it worked out really well. The first hire I made outside of Shira, and Shira and I did this together, was Margot at Reach Local. When we started working with our agency, we had a lot of ads from, I think Dan Henry at the time was like the main guy uh, teaching you how to run ads. And I never wanted to do that. I'm not a math guy. So like naturally the ads thing was never going to work for me. I actually did buy a course on it, tried to learn it, just way over my head. Um, and I know me, I know me very well. So I knew right away, like, I just can't do this. I cannot do this. I will not do this. So I need to find someone to do it. So I hired Reach Local. It was honestly by serendipity. I think I saw an ad from them. Um, and this amazing woman was talking to me. Her name was Margot Bernstein. She's a Jewish mom and I'm Jewish and we just connected right away. And it was just like, you know, it was a really good connection. And after I paid them to work with all of my clients, I think at that time I had seven, uh, seven attorneys um, and converting all their model to them. Essentially what I did with her was I took her aside out of the Reach Local conversation. I'm like, listen, I have no interest in running this agency and being a project manager. It's not who I am. It's not, I'm not good at it. I'm going to end up yelling at you. I know this from experience from yelling at my own wife. So I really don't want this. Um, how can I have you handle all the project management? It's like, well, with Reach Local, we do X, Y, and Z. It's not really that efficient. I'm like, can I hire you outside of Reach Local to hone my business in? She said, yeah, I'm happy to do that. Let me talk to my bosses. Spoke to them. They were okay with it as long as it was kind of on the up and up essentially, which is fine. And I just started paying her $5,000 a month at that time to handle the clients. Keep in mind at that time we were charging maybe $2,000 per client. So 5,000 at that time was a shitload for me. I'd never considered that in my life, but having her handle all the fulfillment, including the ads and the project management allowed me to just focus on what I was good at prospecting and sales and Shira focusing on organization to make me do what I was good at prospecting and sales. So I had this little team. I had Margo, I had Shira, and I had myself, and I knew exactly what to do and how to do it. And on top of that, Margo's experience with the business allowed us to develop systems so fast, like lightning rod fast, which was the first mentorship I really had in my business without even thinking about it, because I paid for fulfillment. But in accordance with that came all their experience, which was cutting my learning curve so much, right? Like the Loom video idea came from Margo, not from me. Red, green, yellow, auto call came from Margo, not from me, right? I'm like all these things that I started building out for my own process that I now teach. A lot of it came from her because she's been doing this for 15 years from before Facebook was even a thing when they were buying like media buys and when they were doing radio ads because Reach Local has been a company for a long time. So I hired her um, for a long time uh, and then I basically was struggling with her difficulty on like, hey, this client's having this issue. They want this or that. And she needed to have essentially like buying power and decision-making power, which she felt she didn't have out of fear of being fired. So I told her if I gave her a $5,000 decision-making power, whether I give you my credit card, you can make any purchase for five grand or, or less, um, or you can make a five grand purchase, a yes or no, in terms of losing a 5K client, that's your call, right? 100%. So I did that, took about a year before we got to that point. Um, I wish I did it sooner, sincerely, I wish. And I paid her more money because of it. So I paid her from five to 7,500. And then we moved into a $10,000 agreement with a small percentage that we pay her every month um, for new clients and such, which is about 10 to 15% because she has some people under her that she manages for our team, which is amazing, right? Um, the biggest thing that we implemented in this process for the team is job scorecards. And that's what I was telling you when we really worked together. I'm like, get Jeff on this and Grant and Brad. Um, and the job scorecard thing really just changed my life, honestly. Um, cannot take credit for it at all. Totally Austin Nestle. Um, because when I work when I worked with Austin, the beginning of it was like, I'm selling a thousand dollar program. I have a good agency. My team's okay. We're still kind of like doing some shit together. And he's like, job scorecard, hundred percent. That's what's missing. And so when we put that in place, not only did we have a scorecard for myself, for Shira, for Margo, we also had it for every other pe pe person that I was never even in contact with on reach local side. And that became insanely valuable. For the first time I felt clarity as to what I'm supposed to do rather than like, I know, right? Like a lot of people sit on here, they're like, I know what to do. But the reality is you don't have it written down. You don't have it written down and thus you cannot allocate it. You, not, you cannot delegate it, delegate it, excuse me, um, and you cannot outsource it. So I would say that those were, were kind of like the models that we implemented in that format. Um, and it just made everything so much easier. Uh, long term, and I'm so so grateful for it. Love it, yeah. In uh, with the job scorecards, I remember my first hire, Tasha. She's still with us, but our communication was not as good as it is now. Not nearly as good. 
And it was because we didn't have clarity around what her responsibilities are, what KPIs she was responsible for, how many, how, even how many hours she was working per week. And that's what the job scorecard does is it puts all of that in one place. So you don't need to like, you're super clear right off the bat and there's no vagueness around it. Yeah. Uh, I and- actually made my own version of the job scorecard by taking scaling up traction, uh, some of Austin Netsley's stuff, like just combining them all together. And I think I have the best job scorecard out there with all of it in one place and tracking the monthly reviews and also 30, 60, 90 day targets, all of that good stuff in one place. I love it. One thing I'll add to the scorecard that I think would be valuable for everyone watching, irregardless of where you're at right now. Um, a lot of people when they hire, especially moving from freelance model to like business owner, which is the biggest crux problem that I see in the agency space today. Like everyone's creating their own jobs rather than creating a business, even though they say they're creating a business and they get super offended when I'm like, Hey, you have no business. You have a job. And they're like, no, I have a business. I'm like, okay, can you take off a week without doing anything? Is that going to work? No, you don't have a business. You have a job, which is okay. But when you hire someone, the stress and anxiety for hiring someone from a, for a job perspective is like, Oh, okay. Um, what did you do this month? And no matter what your mindset is always going to be like, I could have done that. I could have done that. And they didn't do it as good as I wanted to. Instead of here's the freaking KPIs. This is exactly what you're supposed to do. Key performance indicators, the goal for this month. Did you hit it? Yes or no? No ambiguity, clarity only. So it makes difficult conversations because no one wants to have those difficult conversations. It makes it easier, right? So I had to have a difficult conversation with a team member of mine this past week. I'm like, Hey, paid you this amount for this month. These were the KPIs. We simply did not hit them. What do you want to do about it? He's like, you know what? You're totally right. hundred percent. I'm going to take ownership of it. Let me fix it. Let's do this, this, and this. I got you. Okay. All good. Right. These things happen. Nothing is perfect. No one is going to be always perfect. No one is going to have everything done correctly. Not every month is your best month. Those things are fine. Those things are okay. If you do everything in your business systemized more clarity, over ambiguity, you're going to be in a lot better spot overall. And that's really the baseline of the scorecard. 100%. Love it, dude. I always love chatting with you, your wealth of knowledge. So when people come to Tribe of Buyers Live, what can they expect from you there for all three days? Love it. Uh, You can expect openness, awareness, transparency, and love. Um, Love is two things. I love this. This is one of my favorite little pieces to share. Love is two things. Love is supporting you and love is challenging you. I will support you and I will challenge you. I don't want anyone to get stuck in this cyclone of satisfaction versus complacency. And I think this is the worst place to be as a human being, not an entrepreneur, human being. The idea that when you make an achievement, you don't know the definition difference between satisfaction and complacency. So instead of celebrating your win, you're like, what's the next thing right away? It's my most hated thing in sports. You win the championship, what's next? It's like, I just won, chill. Let me enjoy it for a second, my God, right? It's not complacency. So what I'm going to do at this event, not only I'm going to be open with you and vulnerable and share with you and hold you accountable, I'm not going to let you be complacent, but I'm also going to make sure you're satisfied. So have clarity, create the goals that you are looking to achieve, come to Tribe of Buyers and let's achieve them together, right? Someone at Rob's Mastermind will end with this, said at the end of the Mastermind, they're like, you know, I came here without any expectations, but I left with all this. Don't come to Tribe of Buyers without expectation come with an expectation. Doesn't have to be the highest expectation in the world, right? Rob Warner one time told me that any event he goes to, his goal is to have one meaningful conversation. That's a good expectation. You could have more, you can go in there to build a really effective Facebook group, to learn how to sell more effectively, to feel more confident in your abilities on camera, whatever it might be. Go there with something. Talk to Andrew about it, talk to myself about it, talk to Grant, to Brad, to Jeff, anyone there. Be open and vulnerable because that's how we can best help you. And I promise you, I will serve you at my highest level, give you everything I've got from day one through day three, whether you're VIP or not, but you best damn be a VIP fam. Best damn be. Thank you so much, brother. And after people sign up and get their ticket, they actually have a survey asking their intention for the event because I want everybody to come to the event with an intention of what they want out of it. Love it. Um, So we're not letting that slip through the cracks. And I'm so glad that you are going to be there to support. And shout out to your wife. Shout out to Nikos for hashtagging TOB for their special ticket of 66% off today. 
and the group growth and monetization blueprint absolutely free uh, if you buy during the Labor Day sale. So if you want that, hashtag TOB down below and I'll send you over everything you need, including the coupon code. So TOB, TOB down below and you get to meet Alex, me, Jeff, uh, Brad, Grant, all of us there. We're very hands-on. We'll be very hands-on and help you close deals there at the event and help you scale your business. It's going to be uh, Absolute pleasure, brother. Thank you so much for being here. And guys, I will see you next time. See ya.